What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, I am going to be putting a wine rack into this beautiful Lane bar cabinet. My client actually found me through Etsy and wanted me to recreate a bar cabinet that I did a while back, this guy right here. But instead of doing my traditional just painting and taping and, you know, doing my little art deco designs, she wanted me to install a wine bar or a wine rack rather, um, which I, I've never done before. I've never done that in my life. So we are, uh, well, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna try it, you know, we're gonna see what happens. Uh, my client, she wanted to be able to hold at least six wine bottles in the wine rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and build nine places where she can fit a wine bottle and uh yeah she was pretty happy with the mock-up that i drew so i got started and i'm starting off by removing all of the hardware all of the electrical all of that is coming out it's basically getting gutted so that we can install this wine rack and i know it's tempting when you're working on a piece like this and you want to be diligent you want to make sure to get in all of the little nooks and crannies and sand and all that good stuff. I know it's tempting to take the doors off their hinges, but um, I personally wouldn't recommend doing this, especially if you're working with an older piece. Newer pieces, you can kind of get away with it. But if you try to remove the doors and the hinges off of an older piece, they never quite go back on the same way in my experience. So my personal recommendation would just be, you know, to leave them on there and you know, do your best to get in between those stubborn places. And now moving on to the electrical. First and foremost, I am not a, an electrician. I am not trained to handle electrical at all. But one thing I can tell you is when you are working with electrical, please, please, please double, triple, quadruple check that your stuff is not connected to electrical. Um, it's not plugged in, it's not live you know, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, we don't want nobody getting electrocuted when they're uh, working on, you know, electrical in their uh, piece. We don't uh, want that. Anyways, we're taking off the back now, removing staples. This is um, one of my least favorite things to do, quite honestly. Um, but we're doing it because there's that giant hole in the backing and you know, no, nobody wants that. Just a little quick tip for you guys. If you're ever wondering if a piece that you're working on or picking up or buying is solid wood or not, just head to the back of the piece and that'll give you all the information that you need to know. As you can see, this is a combination of particle board, press board, and real wood. Now that the inside of this boy is all cleaned and vacuumed up, I made sure to go in there and get some dimensions for the size of the wine rack that I'm gonna be doing. And I wanted to get the height. As you can see, there's a shelf that has to go in the middle there, and I actually wanted to keep it there um, for like to cover up the top of the wine rack. So I just went ahead and measured up to 18 inches tall, did a little dry fit for my cut piece, and then I made sure to account for the door being there. I didn't want the door to block any of the wine bottles from getting into the uh, wine rack. So I just went ahead and drew a line so that I would know where that door was and I could measure my circles for the wine bottles accordingly. And right now I'm doing kind of just like a grid. So you can, you know, do this whatever way you like, however you choose to um, measure out your circles for the wine. Um, I'm just kind of doing like a grid system and making sure that I have enough room in between each bottle so that uh, they don't like cling together and so just so they're like nicely and evenly spread out. 
And I'm using a four inch circle to cut out my wine holes. Um, I wanted to have a little extra room, you know, wine bottles aren't four inches wide, but I wanted to allow my client to have a variety of wine bottle sizes as well as not have to like struggle to put the wine into there. This honestly was a little tricky to line up properly, so I ended up taking one of the cutouts and using that as kind of like my way to line up where my screw should go. And I just went in and did little marks with the screw going into the wood so that I would know where to place it and that I would get it, you know, right where I wanted it to be every time. And this helped a little, but it's still very tricky. Take your time, have patience with yourself, all that good stuff. <laughs> But anyways, we're going into routing. I wanted these to have a really nice rounded edge and I have never used a router before, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to, you know, figure it out. So we are going to take this rounded edge bit right here and make sure that the edge is flush with the top of the bit. That way it creates a perfectly rounded edge going around that circle. And you're just gonna move slowly around it, making sure that all of these edges are nice and even and flush. Take your time. Obviously, if you're doing this for the first time like I am, you're gonna, you know, have some hiccups in the beginning, but you'll get the hang of it, I promise. For the assembly of this piece, I'm going with dowels, and first I wanted to make sure that I had all of my dowel holes in the correct spot, so I went and marked in with a pencil where I wanted the dowel holes to be. Keep in mind that one edge has to be on the side of the wood, and then one has to be like on the, the back of the wood, if that makes sense. That way when you're putting them together, they create a 90 degree angle. This dowel jig is extremely helpful. I highly recommend getting one. It comes in a little kit at Home Depot if you want to get the dowels and this jig together. It comes with really cool attachments that make sure that you have complete control over the depth and width and uh, location of your hole even. It's really, really awesome. Highly recommend, super helpful. And before assembling the piece all together, I made sure to do a dry fit, and that is just a fit without glue, and I wanted to make sure that everything lined up properly and completely. And once I knew that everything was going to work perfectly, I went ahead and put some glue into the holes and then hammered everything into place with my mallet. When you're lining up your jig, you want to make sure that everything is perfectly placed. So you want the line that you drew to be right in the center of that circle that you're going to use. And then you're going to want to make sure that the circle that you end up putting your little attachment into is perfectly in the center of the board. You'll notice me doing a lot of little dry fits like this because I wanna make sure that all of my sides are lining up to the sides that they're supposed to. Um, it gets a little tricky, at least for me. You can probably make this a little easier by making special marks for which piece lines up with which piece. Um, but yeah, it gets a little confusing, you know, which side goes to which. So for the pieces that are going to be holding up my wine bottles, I am using large dowels for that purpose. They're half inch dowels and I'm putting them into place two on each side of each of the holes that the wine is going to go into. That way when you put the wine bottles in, it fits perfectly between each of the dowels. And to make sure that everything's in the right place, I'm using this triangle ruler just to make sure that I have everything perfectly aligned on each side of the circle and creating again a little bit of a grid system here where I can mark every point where I want my drill to go into because I will be making holes in the wood where the dowel can go into and uh, be supported and kind of be sandwiched in between the two pieces of wood and never come out. To make sure that I have the exact same layout on the other piece of wood, I am going ahead and creating kind of like a little trace 
thing with paper and tape and just making sure to mark every single place where a hole is and then transferring it to the other piece of wood. That way when I flip it over, every circle will be in the same spot. If you do this, don't do it with the paper on, just mark every place with a pencil and do it that way. Of course we all want perfection, but do not worry if things are like absolutely perfectly lined up because dowels are a little bit flexible. So you can kind of adjust them and move them to fit into the circle if it's like, you know, a couple millimeters off, but don't like go too crazy. <laughs> For the dowel length, I am making sure to account for the wood that's going to be on either side of the dowel when it's put into the circles. So I'm making sure that they are just half an inch shorter than the total depth of the wine rack. When sawing it, you want to make sure that you put your blade just a touch over the pencil line because you want to account for the thickness of the blade. As you can see, when I cut through it, there is the slightest hint of the line that used to be there and you want that because then you make sure that you get the perfect measurement. Once again, I am doing another dry fit first, making sure that the holes are big enough and then I'm hammering everything into place, making sure that the wood glue is there, making sure that my holes are in the right place, my dowels are all set to go. And then I am putting the backing onto it. And this is kind of where things went wrong. I honestly don't really know how to do this better or differently, um, but I tried to line up all of the dowels into the other holes once everything was dry, of course. Um, I, you know, tried to get everything to line up perfectly and I think maybe my holes weren't all the same depth and so there were some that were like taller than others and I kept having an issue that like once I got the dowels on one side to go in, the dowels on the other side would pop out and it was just a whole bundle of problems. <laughs> but I eventually ended up caving and putting in some screws just to make sure that everything was secure and in place. And once all that was good, I went ahead and filled up some of the seams that were in between the wood with some wood filler, and then went ahead and sanded the whole thing down. And um, honestly, I would recommend doing this entire process beforehand. So like sanding, staining, all that sort of stuff, do all of that before you put your pieces together. I repeat, do all of that before you put your piece together because this process, let me tell you, this process was literally the worst. <laughs> like having to go in there, clean everything, vacuum all of it out, get all of the dust out and staining inside the piece was absolutely horrible. It was so frustrating, but I, you know, I did it. I ended up using gel stain. This worked so much better than regular stain. I was able to kind of just spread it around instead of it just soaking right into the wood. It was much, much easier to do that. So I uh, highly recommend gel stain if you ever catch yourself in this mess, but hopefully um, you heed my warning and don't find yourself in this situation. Uh, but if you ever do, gel stain is the way to go. It is much easier and uh, yeah, you, you just kind of got to rub it and smear it around until you find all the surfaces are stained properly, I suppose. Um, yeah. To, to every woodworker out there, forgive me. For the top coat, I'm using some clear gloss wipe-on polyurethane, and this just gives it a nice shine. I'm doing a total of three coats on this bad boy, and uh, yeah, it just gives it a nice polished finish. But anyways, here we go. Please uh, forgive the fact that I'm using balsamic vinegar and uh, apple cider vinegar to show this to you because I usually just cook with wine so I don't have much of it. But ladies and gentlemen, I give you a wine rack. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, you guys, for sticking with me through this crazy process. I know that it's a hot mess, but you know, it's my first time doing it, so I'm honestly pretty dang proud. It holds wine, and it looks, you know, pretty good. So I'm pleased. If you would like to stay tuned for the final product of the exterior and interior of this piece, make sure to like and subscribe and do all those things so that we can be a happy flippin' family. Alright guys, stay flippin'.